This is Twit. All righty. Apple uh, is celebrating Global Accessibility Awareness Day. That's uh, this Thursday as the crow flies uh, with a host of apps and features that are going to be coming soon. Um, and you wanted to talk a little bit about some of your shortcuts uh, as well as Global Accessibility Awareness Day and uh, everything in between. So take it away, Matthew. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always great. Um, Thursday, May 21st is Global Accessibility Awareness Day, which is uh, glad if you see that on Twitter, or GAD, sorry. Um, wait, which one is it actually? Now, that, now I'm second-guessing myself. GAD. GAD. There it is. Um, yep. <laughs> Um, but uh, Apple always makes a big deal about it because it is a big deal, and that's fantastic. Um, they, in general, have very good resources and have gotten even better this year updating their website where you can learn about what they do because I think that's one of the biggest things is people just have no idea that their phones do this type of thing until you need it, and then you're very thankful that it actually does this type of thing because uh, once it's like yeah, it's a little too late otherwise. Um, but I have a series of shortcuts because that was one of the things when Workflow was acquired and turned into shortcuts, Apple like mentioned in their press release confirming it that accessibility was a major part of it because especially like not only for regular people doing things in one tap is helpful, but when you have limited mobility or stuff like that, um, having a shortcut take multiple steps for you instead of you having to tap around a lot is a major time saver because even though technologies like voiceover is one of the major accessibility things that they have out there, that's great. And, but it is still reading off every single part of the screen as you go past it and you can, it enables you to do it, but it's still not as fast as just like it going automatically through a shortcut. Um, but even, I don't remember if it was iOS 13 or one of the point releases, but they added, specific accessibility shortcuts in the shortcuts app and most of them um no actually yeah they they toggle a lot of the features that you have so things like um voice control you can turn on and off with shortcuts here actually i have a list of shortcuts um let me pull it up real quick um i have 13 that i put together <clears throat> and the, actually the first one um I did get through Federico Vitucci of Mac Stories has written a piece about all of the ways you can deep link into the settings app and jump into specific pages. And so I made one that's just open accessibility settings, which is really nice. Um, also, real quick, I guess, do you guys, I can show this stuff on my iPad real quick. Yeah. Let me, okay. I can put, okay, there we go. Um, so for anyone who is listening along, run my little shortcut, which I'll put in the show notes too, of show me this clip and it should open into the YouTube video. But um, I have open accessibility settings, which opens just into the root page in the accessibility app uh, or in the settings app for accessibility, which is nice. Just takes you right there. So you can, if anybody is curious, you can just op run this shortcut and go in and explore, which is pretty cool. They have all of the different features in there, but most of the stuff you find on this page can still be triggered by a shortcut. Um, we also have, I have a bunch for the different brightness levels that you can set because you might not think about it, but how bright your screen is can be an accessibility thing if you have uh, sensitivity in your eyes. And one of the features is um, white point. So there is an accessibility setting that if you, some of these are actually like, the, the terms are slightly confusing because you are, um, <laughs> you're like turning it on, but it reduces the thing. So to turn it <laughs> right. off, brings it back up um but like i have a brightness shortcut that can just do i set up a bunch of different options and like very low will turn the brightness to zero percent but then also turn the white point on which it's reduced white point. so and then it's like extremely dark i'll run it real quick it's like you can basically not it looks like it's black but the screen's actually still on so it's pretty much as dark as <laughs> How i do should you have undo? done this one uh, How do you undo? Um, there we go. Oh, there's the menu. Yeah. So, <laughs> but then it's like very, very bright. Is like on screen. It's pretty much blown out entirely, and you can't see it. So I think I have average is the good one. Um, but that's a great way for, especially like yeah, like <laughs> I mean maybe the super dark one. I don't know who actually could need that, but if it's the <laughs> middle of the night, um, it could make a difference. 
Um, uh, they added in the dark mode options, so you can just switch quickly between light mode and dark mode. Um, it can't actually detect what you currently have, so in theory it should just switch it, but I have a little prompt that lets you switch it back and forth, which is nice. And you can also use the button in control panel. Um, yeah, that's true too. I have this, um, you can put it in like your shortcuts widget, or you could make one that just always switches to the other and put it on your home screen. That's like a pretty nice benefit there. Um, there's options to uh, toggle the reduce motion and reduce transparency stuff. So Ooh, anytime nice. you like swipe close an app and stuff like that, it, uh, it has a lot of motion that can make some people sick. Um, so the shortcut can, can just turn those on and off, especially if you just want to try it for a while. Like that's what's cool about the shortcuts is you don't have to like always set it this way and then dig back into the settings to change it. Mm -hmm. um, but this one's my favorite. It's called Embiggen. I liked, I just chose that name, but it sets all of the text size and then uh, to maximum and then turns off the zooms and things like that and um, reduce motion and transparency and contrast. So when I run the shortcut, if I choose um, I easier, want this. Yes, this is literally like uh, not to be ageist, but like grandma mode, where it makes everything giant all of a sudden. It's actually really good for um, tutorials because it's ginormous all of a oh sudden. My God. It's hilarious. I love um, it. But then, but of then course, you can easily uh, shut it all off. Yeah, in you can one just switch move. it back. Yeah, oh, which I had to do great. because I was like, <laughs> I did the same thing with the brightness. You turn it up all the way, and then you're like, oh my God. Um, uh, I'm toggle getting voice that control. One right now. We'll just turn this on and off. So when you run voice control in the top right corner of your iPad, there's a little microphone that shows up. And if it can detect your face to using, I mean, that's also a setting that you can turn on and off, but um, then you can control your shortcut or anything on the screen using your voice. Run shortcut. And it just turned itself off. So yeah, voice control is amazing. I feel like we should talk about that more or, or like I got to do a video because you can sit there and not even touch your iPad at all, which is fantastic. Um, can I ask you voice, something? Yeah, sure. Is there a way to add a shortcut without having to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the shortcut to tap add shortcut? Or do they do um, that so that you are required to see every step that the shortcut takes in theory? Is it the uh, same as like yes. scrolling to the bottom of terms of service? Yeah, um, there's a whole for anyone who hasn't actually played around with shortcuts. It's it's actually like a giant barrier right at the beginning. You have to allow untrusted shortcuts in the settings app and then shortcuts. And you also have had to run a shortcut first before you're allowed to. And then every time you import a shortcut from somebody like me, you have to go past all of the steps and then hit a giant red button that says add untrusted shortcut, which is like it makes it seem like Apple's like warning there's a virus detected. Matthew Casanelli yeah. is giving you a thing, and it's like, no, like I'm. You could trust me at least. I don't know. I can't speak for everybody, but I'm never going to do anything. Like, never share a shortcut that I didn't make right. myself, even, um, or or improve and check myself. But um, that I think that's like, I kind of chalked it up to like they lost the battle against the lawyers inside Apple because it is. Shortcuts I just is pretty wish I had intense. A tap. You know what I mean? I could just at least tap to yeah. scroll to the um, bottom of that. Yeah, in the shortcuts app, yeah, you, I don't think you can. You can hit the um, here. I can show it real again. If you hit my shortcuts, it will scroll to the bottom of this library. I thought that's what yeah. you meant, but no, sure. yeah, I'm talking. Yeah. yeah, whenever it pops up to install a new one, and then you, you I can remember. You know, Federico Vatici released a shortcut that was basically accessing all of the parts of the music library of, of mm -hmm. Apple Music that you can't normally get to. Oh yeah. And, and it had so many steps, and so I'm just like, fa, 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 in order to get to the bottom and say <laughs> add. And I thought, why can't I just? Why can't they put that at the top? Yeah. And then I thought, I oh, wonder if there's. I wonder if voice would control would let you do that. Like, if Ooh, there's some like scroll, scroll to, to bottom, bottom of command. window or something. Ooh, we should mm. we should research that because that's yeah. They, their accessibility can benefit you even if you don't have accessibility needs necessarily. Yeah. Um, I'll run through the other ones real quick because they're all these other ones don't have as many options. But um, there's option you can toggle voice control, toggle voiceover, which is where it speaks everything. Speak screen is also similar, where it can read off like an article that's on the screen. Although I do yeah, have another shortcut terrible that's, voice. Yeah, that's more um, specific for it. But 
for accessibility needs, like speak screen also says other stuff. Um, switch control is where people, there are like Bluetooth switches that you can use instead of um, like a mouse or a keyboard or anything like that. So for people who have mobility issues, they can press that and it will advance to the next thing and read off as you go. Um, guided access is not even necessarily accessibility, but it can be um, of where it just like limits you to the current uh, app that you're in. So that's like hand your iPad to someone else or somebody who might accidentally close the screen and get confused or something like that. Um, then there's magnifier, which turns your camera screen into a big magnifier so you can read stuff off in the distance, which is super nice. I guess you guys can't see really, but I can. you can zoom in a lot, which is just like anybody who needs glasses could benefit from that sometimes. Um, toggle LED flash can... Um, it, the LED on your camera can flash when you get notifications if you don't necessarily notice the vibrations. And then another good one is mono audio, where if you have hearing issues and you can't hear both sides of a stereo track, it can switch it just to one, so you can hear pretty much everything. So yeah, I have a. It's a. There's a ton in there. Too. There's a couple more options that I didn't set up. Like um, I think it does captions and things like that, but. I'm not incredibly familiar with how all of those work, so I wasn't sure in what use cases it would be most beneficial. But um, right, if right. anybody does know or is interested in that, I can I can definitely build some shortcuts there too. 